This short presentation is about carbon and how carbon comes to be stored in soil. So here's a couple of pictures from um, a recent run that I did. Um, this is the soil near where I live and it's, as you can see, very pale, very crumbly and doesn't look that interesting. But soil is in fact enormously important for the global carbon cycle um, in the Earth and Life module. So as you can see here, um, that soils, um, including peatlands, have a very large storage of carbon. They store around 2,300 billion tonnes of carbon and um, they are more important than the, all, the, all the atmospheric store of carbon and they're more important than every living plant which is found on Earth. This is incredibly um, significant when we think about the store of carbon and why that matters. Carbon in soil is actually coming from two different pathways. So firstly, it comes from below the soil. So below the soil we have bedrock. That bedrock, particularly if it's um, a carbonate rock which contains carbon, such as a limestone, this is a piece of limestone here, as that carbonate rock is weathered through the process of carbonation, it will release carbonate ions into the soil. So this is called the inorganic pathway. This was non-living, inorganic, and it's released into the soil. But we also have, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, in autumn, you'll know that lots of leaves fall off the trees and they land on top of the soil. They're gradually broken down and decomposed. These leaves contain carbon. That carbon has been fixed in a leaf by the process of photosynthesis. Then the leaf dies, it falls to the ground, and then it's released in the organic pathway because it's come from material which was once living. These are the two pathways which contribute to the soil's carbon store. So the soil store of carbon is part of the larger carbon cycle, um, part of the global carbon cycle. And you will know that every part of the carbon cycle has inputs and outputs. It is an open system. So a couple of things coming into the organic components of the soil. We have dead plant material, as we mentioned, leaves. We could also have animal waste um, coming into the organic um, component of the soil. Uh, here, for example, we're going to be exploring the darker the colour of the soil. Often this indicates the higher the organic content uh, which is found in that soil. But not all carbon which is stored in the soil will stay there. Some of it may be eroded, you can see a deeply eroded gully here in this little image, and um, some of it may be lost, or carried away by wind or by water, and this is one way in which the carbon cycle is linked to the water cycle in relation to soil. Secondly, decomposition occurs, um, and this releases carbon, carbon, which is usually oxidised to carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. And this process is strongly controlled by the availability of moisture, also linked to the water cycle, and temperature. So generally the warmer the temperatures, the faster the rate of decomposition and soil respiration occurring. So of course, this is part of an equation. If these are greater than these, then carbon will start to build up in the soil. But if these are greater than these, then we'll have a decline in the amount of organic carbon found in the soil. So to summarise what we know so far, carbon starts off in the atmosphere and then it's fixed into carbon which is found in the leaves of these um, plants. This is a tiny little oak tree that I planted a few years ago. Then the leaf uh, falls in autumn, it's about to fall soon. It decomposes and it becomes part of the carbon which is stored in the soil here. Gradually over time that may be oxidised into carbon in the soil but may well also um, due to the presence of microbes in the soil, may then oxidise to form carbon dioxide back in the atmosphere. So you can see carbon is cycled between the atmosphere, the vegetation store, and then the soil store. And there's a continuous cycling of that which occurs. This cycling is part of the fast carbon cycle. And it's also affected by human activity. So one of the things which can greatly affect the loss of carbon from the soil is ploughing and turning over the soil that occurs um, after the harvest has taken place. Um, and this has led to a policy that many farmers pursue in the UK, which is called zero tillage, where the soil is not turned over, but the new crop is sown straight into the existing soil. 
Okay, so to review our knowledge, firstly, the soil stores carbon and the store of carbon is enormously large globally. It's bigger than the atmospheric store of carbon and it's bigger than all the land plants. It's around 2,300 billion tonnes. Carbon in the soil could come from organic or inorganic um, material. The soil store is part of the fast carbon cycle and there's rapid cycling between vegetation, soil and atmosphere. Inorganic carbon is added by weathering of the bedrock. Organic carbon is added by decomposition of the plant material. And finally, carbon can be lost from the soil by the decomposition of organic matter and oxidation of carbon to form carbon dioxide, which goes back into the atmosphere.